Hello everyone, and welcome back to another part of Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. So I'm going to try to do as much as I can today um, in the way of completing the story. <laughs> because I figure it's about time we hurry up and try to finish this. I think we've been on Persona for... A, a, a few months, I'm not going to lie. So, um, yeah, let's just uh, start with a battle, though. Only because I don't want to just immediately jump into the story. In your head, your own appearance, as well as your alter ego, your I, go. I got some chamomile, um, what was it? Meal in vanilla, I think it was. Tea. It is very good. Just a few moments until the gong of fate rings. Wonderful. Not from above. <laughs> Wrong. One. Wow. Okay, that combo was easy. All right, I think I got the hang of it. I wasn't close enough. Easy enough. I just realized I don't really know how to play Chi very well. I think I've already said that. Well, if it wasn't obvious already. That was well done. Yukiko, you've gotten stronger again. I could really sense your passion. That was all done now. Welcome. The velvet room. All right, let's get to the story then. Oh, gosh, it's another Lapras one. Wait, but we're so close to being done. Hold on, let me see. No. Okay. Yeah, that's all there is. So once I finish these, then we'll be done. The higher I climb, the thicker the red fog seems to get. The sounds of battle below me fade away as I get farther and farther up. Suddenly, a deep blue shape appears in my red-tinged vision. I stopped. Oh my. It seems we meet again, Labrys. Stop. Wait, what? You're Theodore, right? 
Why are you here? Still looking for your sister? I don't think she's around here, though. No, I have stopped looking for her. Even had I found her, what I wish to know can no longer be learned from her. This is a problem. Mm. What I yearn for is something that I must discern for myself. You all have taught me that. Huh. I guess you've changed a little too, Theodore. Hmm. Do I seem so? Watching you has broadened my spectrum a bit. No, a great deal. <laughs> yeah. I figured something out during all this fighting too. Oh? May I ask what that is? Oh, sure. It ain't anything mind-blowing though. I just felt that the bonds you form with people get passed along and only keep spreading. I see. That is intriguing. Yukun and the others got hurt trying to save me. I want to save Shokun, even if it hurts me. We all keep button heads over and over, but the banner of friendship ain't just for show. It's what lets you go against someone while still trusting in them. My, how surprising. Your expression is completely different from the last time I met you. you. You think so? I can't tell for myself. There's no doubt. You've likely grown during these events. That must be it. Grown? I'm a machine. I have a cold metallic body. And it'll be an eternity before that changes. But if Theodore's saying that I've grown, then he must be talking about my heart. The warm memories that everyone has given me. It's not just some data that's been inserted into my memory. It's ingrained into me. Somewhere much deeper within myself. While I watched you, I was thinking to myself as well. What is the reason you fight? What supports you? And what do you wish to protect through these battles? I have a feeling that I'm coming close to reaching the answer. Even if I only have a faint idea for now. Huh? Doing something for someone else. All of you gathered here are connected by that common thread of emotion. You call them bonds. And those bonds guide you towards what you wish for. Our wishes. And my sister must have left that room with a wish, just like you. That is how I understand it. He's right. Theodore's words illuminate my own inner feelings. What we yearn for... What we believe in. That's what we wish to show, Shokun. That all our wishes, how we think about someone and do things for those people. It's because we wish for that person to be better. For the whole world to shine just a little bit brighter. <laughs> and now I'm wishing for Shokun to can learn how wonderful this world truly is. Thanks, Theodore. You're awesome. Huh? I'm awesome? Is that so? Hmm. It does have a nice ring to it, though. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't be keeping you here. You're going to go fulfill your wish, no? Please, proceed. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Theodore. I wish you luck. With those final words, Theodore disappears, melting into the fog. The powerful enemy waiting up for me ahead may swallow me whole, but... I won't lose. I have the wishes of everyone supporting me. I'm sure those wishes will reach Shokun's heart as well. <clears throat> I thank Theodore for boosting my spirits as I pick up the pace and climb the stairs with a clear head. I was under the impression that the tea would help my mucus, but it does not seem to be helping much. Another quake rocks the tower, and I have to crouch down to keep from staggering. It feels like these earthquakes are growing more and more frequent. Even as the shaking itself grows stronger and stronger, there's no doubt that an indescribably powerful force is getting closer and closer. Labyrinth! Labyrinth! Can you hear me? Focus on! These tremors are crazy! Are you all okay? Tons of shadows are pouring out and... It seems Fukusan's group had been trying to catch up with us after Yukun and the others recovered enough to move on. While they were about halfway up the tower, 
a ton of shadows suddenly began to attack them. Right now, the Bavit and those shadows are coming through the tower towards us. Anyway, I got in contact with Kikuno-san earlier. There's something I need to tell you. We discovered the password to the file that I gave you before. It's King of the Fall. Files on the memory card that Kikuno-san had given me before the we left the helicopter. I forgot all about that during the fierce battles that I'd been in up until now. Those files might contain the clues to lead the bringing of this case to an end. Thanks, Fukusan. I'll give it a try. She told me that Mitsuru Senpai figured it out. We're counting on you, Labyrus. After Mitsuru san and the others rescued the rest of the Inaba Persona users at Juness, they strive to bank it back to the tower in order to intercept the shadows flooding the town and converging on this place. With a sigh of relief overhearing that everyone's safe, I find the project the protected file, and try to use the password Fukusan gave me. Password accepted. Open in file. This... I instantly have to access... I instantly have access to the full contents of the data. The locked file seems to details of Shuji Kutsuki's personal experiences. The dates are marked as taken place in 1999, and the test subject's name is Shonu Minazaki. A strong reading is getting close. Labyrinths, be careful! I continue reviewing the data while Fukusan cautions me and prepare for another fight. The stairs eventually come to an end. A bizarre sight quite different from anything I've seen up until now leaps into view. this place the strong wind blowing here keeps the fog from becoming too thick this white space is what appears to be the red marble and vibrant green patterns running through it like blood vessels pillars that appear to be stylized flames sta stand around us casting eerie shadows onto the lustrous floor floating near the center in the crystalline object that appears to be slightly taller than I am it emits a bluish green light. On closer inspection, I see golden particles clinging to the rotating object. Are those persona fragments from our past fights? As I walk by step across <clears throat> I walk step by step across the red floor, I approach the red the young man staring by the crystal. As his heel is a man in a suit? Who could it be? Beginning facial scan. Search in records. Result found. Toro Adachi. And who was arrested last year for perpetrator case that Yukun and his friends solved? What could he possibly be doing here? You again, you goddamn robot. Damn you for coming all this way. This son of a bitch betrayed me too. All of you are completely useless, and I can't even get an answer from him either. I don't know what happened before I got here, but Shokun seems furious. He places a foot in Adachi-san's body and leans heavy into it. Adachi-san groans faintly. Looks like he's alive but unconscious. Hey, scrap for brains. What happened to him? Where the hell's Minazuki? I... I don't know. He fought us, and... You guys did something to him? Bullshit, that's impossible! He's strong. As strong as me! And there's no way in hell that he'd lose to some goddamn pest like you! Shokun, there's something I want you to hear. It's about your father. <laughs> Shokun is currently very unstable, much like when I met him earlier. Averting his eyes from the truth and trying to forget everything about himself. How is he, <laughs> he is right now is how I used to be in short while ago before I met Yukuna Mitsuru-san. I was able to overcome it thanks to everyone, but Shokun is cowering just like I was. Just like I was. 
boy, howdy. <laughs> and knowing that the truth Fukusan entrusted me with may hurt more makes my heart ache. Shuji Akutsuki, your father, embedded a palm of dusk into your body for his own research. But because the persona ability didn't awaken in you, you went in a vegetative state. And then Akutsuki threw you away. Is that right? Just when I was wondering what shit you were gonna spew after coming all this way. Did you come to rub salt in my wounds, you goddamn bastard? Yeah, that's right. That piece of shit tossed me aside. He was the only one. The only one in my world, and he did that to me. I already know that he was a goddamn bastard, so what? It doesn't matter. It's Shokun. Dude. This world's so fun, isn't it? Full of shitty bastards, always pressing in on you. It's so awesome. I'd rather be alone forever than spend another second having to deal with another dipshit ever again. So you can all just disappear. That ain't true. You, you don't really want to be alone at all. Huh? <laughs> you broken piece of junk. Have you finally lost it for good? I won't be totally alone. <laughs> I'll be beside myself, laughing at how stupid you are. <laughs> huh? It's a micro memory card. Your father, Shuji Kutsuki, recorded the experiments he did to you on it. <gasps> Listen to this from a report on Project Puppet Master. Subject name? Sho Minazuki. Soon after beginning his training, his abilities have reached what one would call an astounding level. Muscle strength, agility. Physically, he surpasses normal specimens. Special mention must be made of his abnormally aggressive nature. For example, in combat training, Sho will attempt to utterly destroy his opponent until we force him to stop. The depth of his fury is unfathomable but having no rational or mental breaks based on his rationality makes him an ideal weapon. Psychological analysis suggests that Sho is attempting to gain a connection to others by hurting them as a result of our teachings. If he continues to grow, he'll be extremely valuable to our research. Luckily, the boy seems to adore me as a father figure. That will be useful. Kutsuki's a bitch. You see? The reason you're hurting everyone is because you want a connection with them. It's because of the experiments he did on you. And because you weren't taught any other way to connect with people. That's incredibly sad. Is that all you have to say? Shokun! Yeah, he's right. So what? What do you want me to do? If I really want a connection with the world, and destroying it is the only way I know how, then what's wrong with me trying to destroy everything? The same goes for you, you piece of trash. You want a connection with me? You want to bond with me? Then I'll shred you to pieces! Shokun draws his two swords, almost bitten with rage. His eyes are clouded with madness and benevolence. His stare itself feels like blades piercing into me. Whenever Shokun got him worked up before, the other person would step in. But it doesn't happen now. As Shokun draws closer, the bloom of dust within me stirs a little. I whisper back to it, feeling the presence inside. Yeah, it's okay. Thanks for leaving this to me. Shokun, if you don't know any other way, then I'll go head to head with you your way. And then, I'll make sure you hear me out. Okay. Hmm. 
your feet. No, it's not over yet. I have nothing. No one at all. If this shitty world won't give me anything, then I'm gonna see it destroyed, no matter what. Sokun is on his knees. He desperately tries to regain his feet. To regain to yeah, regain his feet <laughs> by leaning on his swords, his face contorted in pain. The dangerous aura I felt from him before battle isn't weakening. On the contrary, it's becoming stronger. Shokun, do you really think you were alone? Of course I was. What do you know? I was always No, Shokun. You were never alone. <laughs> There's more in that file. Do you remember why you went into that coma? How should I know? I took the medicine Ikutsuki gave me, went into a machine, and... It was an experiment Ikutsuki set up to erase Minazuki-kun. Dad... tried to erase him? Why? After transplanting the Plume of Dusk, you didn't awaken to a persona. Ikutsuki's plan was already a bust at that point, but after a while, Ikutsuki learned there was another personality in you, inside the Plume of Dusk. <sighs> that was the change in you. At first, it seems like Ikutsuki was interested in that other you, too. But the new you was different, and wouldn't listen to what Ikutsuki said at all. That other you awakened to a persona, destroyed the test facility, and then tried to kill Ikutsuki. Huh? Bullshit! That's not true! Why would he try to kill my dad? You really can't figure it out? Minazuki was trying to protect you. <gasps> Nokun could only find a connection with other people by hurting them. As a result, the distance <clears throat> that distanced him from everyone. Feeling that the world had rejected him, Sokun chose to destroy the world instead. But Minazuki kun had supported Shokun through all this. The, that other self that he would fight for the boy said that he would fight for the boy anything is the only way to uh-huh okay nazuki kun feels the same way shokun does the only way to do anything through hurting others but he's doing it to protect Shokun. He was still unstable then and got captured. After that, Ikutsuki tried to erase Minazuki-kun while leaving the persona. Do you get it now, Shokun? It was Minazuki-kun and his... ...power of a bond that supported you. That's bullshit. That's... that's not... Shokun claps his head in his hands and falls to his knees. My heart hurts. This is Shokun's pain. Shokun's world consisted of being denied by everyone, and only being accepted by the other person within him, Minazuki-kun. I'd mercilessly shattered that, and I'm trying to draw him into an own world. Into our world, the real world. The world that is nothing but a place of fear for him. I know how difficult it is for him to accept it. Ha! What's this sob story going on over here? <gasps> General Teddy suddenly appears behind Shokun. Something's not right. I never sensed his presence here before. General Teddy should be a fake version of Teddy, created from a shadow. I turn my senses towards him again. 
that wrong feeling I sensed when I met him, and the classroom has gotten even stronger. I can't put it into words, but it's a very ominous presence. Aha! Uh -huh. Has the stupid brat been beaten? You're disqualified from the P1 Climax! Now hurry up and get out of here! Kagutsuchi. Kagutsuchi? General Teddy, so you really weren't... Oh, poor little shut-in Shochan. Was Labichan mean to you? Are you gonna have to go back to the hospital again? You don't have to worry. Guess what? I'll set you free. <laughs> General Teddy, step away from Shokun. <laughs> You're the champion of the P1 Climax, Labichan. Congratulations! Your prize is death. General Teddy viciously grabbed Shokun by the head from behind and ruthlessly lifted him up with one arm. Suspended in midair, Shokun's face cringes in pain. What unimaginable strength! Ah! Shokun! Who in the world are you? What are you gonna do with Shokun? <laughs> what am I going to do? Isn't, Isn't it, it obvious? obvious? I'm, I'm going, going to kill him! him. I'll grant this brat what he wants, a world of solitude, but I'll be the only one there. It will be a world all for myself, where only I exist. General Teddy's tone changes, and an ominous and hatred-filled voice reaches my ears, echoing as if I'm reach it. it's reaching me from the depths of hell. I know this voice. When I was forced into sleep in the laboratory in Yakushima, I had a dream. In that dream, a voice echoed in my head. This voice tempted me to forget everything, shut myself away from that distorted world, reflected in only my desires. It's the same voice. Don't tell me. Are you... That's right. This red fog and the brat's power were on loan from me. At least you worked quite well for me. <laughs> Wait, so the thing Minazuki kun was talking about waking at this tower is. <laughs> you finally figured it out. Fortunately, the Horde of Shadows to create a vessel and the Persona Fragments to control it have been gathered. All that's left is to fuse that brat with the shadows as a base, and then devour the Persona Fragments to inhabit my new corporeal form. I pay no heed to others. I am the collective will of those who abandon all connections and strive to live only for themselves. I incinerate everything. I will fall, murder, tremble, and cast you humans down into the depths of despair. My name is Hino Kagutsuchi, one who kills all who live in this world. Red fog gushes like blood from the body of General Teddy. No, Hino Kakatsuchi. It gets sucked through the in through Sho's eyes, ears, mouth, and wounds. Shokun! As I try to rush towards them, the empty husk of General Teddy's body has has become crumples into a dark lump. Oh, that's because crumbles into a black lump of shadow. At the same time, Shokun, or whatever he is now, turns into evil red gaze towards me. <laughs> this power is immeasurably strong. And Shokun's put Shokun's or Minazuki's Minazuki <laughs> My entire body, metal body, shrieks as I'm twisted in directions that I was never meant to go. Don't worry. I won't let you die so quickly. You will live to witness my advent and will be the first sacrifice to my power. I'll never let you do that. Give Shokun back. 
Your nerve astounds me. But I wouldn't be so sure. Your allies are about to be overwhelmed by the flood of shadows. Bet. You all fought so long within this red fog, just as I planned. You are exhausted to your very souls. You have no hope of defeating me now. You were quite useful, Puppet. I had directed you with them with the aim of harvesting their personas at first, though. The other tournament... And this one, too... So you were... The real one behind these battles! Yes. I needed a vessel. Had I taken their shadows for my own, their own wills would have made them less obedient than I required. I learned that in the previous battles. Thus did I prepare this fog and my new scheme to carve away at your personas. Personas are the suppressed strength of heart. Nothing is better suited to suppress the will of shadows than that. So that's why you made us fight! I glance towards the crystal floating up above. So that's a collection of persona fragments that had been carved away from us. And now enough of them have been gathered. This power what will be what brings destruction upon this world. The final piece required to create the vessel for a god. <laughs> now is the time for despair. This new form that you have given me. Behold it! A low-pitched laugh echoes across the area, and a blast of heat rages from the enormous body that appears. A god that is manifested using shadows as his vessel. Since I was created to be an anti-shadow weapon, I look up on what could be considered my anarch arch nemesis. <gasps> this can't be. A being that can incinerate the world. Its powers are so tremendous. They could perform such an outrageous deed. Its roar shakes the air, and there's a heat like scorching flame. My senses show that it, it has fully manifested. My legs won't move. At this rate, I'll be destroyed by it, too. But as I recoil in trepidation, mysterious voices, unlike those of normal persona communications, echo through me. Labyrinth, don't give up! We're all cheering you on! Labrys, leave this place to us. Once this is all over, we'll have a party and celebration. I'm positive you can do this, Labrys. We'll take care of all these shadows. Don't worry, Labrys. You're not alone. I close my eyes and imagine the faces of everyone I've met since my awakening. Everyone who had accepted me. Everyone who had given me a place to belong. And because everyone is fighting below me right now, I'm able to stand here. This is all on you, Labrys. You promised that you'll come back no matter what. We won't lose. Labrys, please win this for us. We're counting on you, Labrys, son. Please protect our world. <laughs> all the friends that I met in Inaba, my companions who trust in me, finished the job before me. The voices give me strength. We'll make sure to hold them back here. You can win this, Labrys. Labrys, we're entrusting this to you. Our thoughts are with you. Let us handle things here. You have your own role to carry out. Don't you dare tell us that you're giving up on this now. We'll do our best to give you time. Labichan! Your knight is on your side! Get a grip, Labrys. We're fighting with you, too. Please win this, Labrys. 
sister. We're all waiting for your return. Let's fight this together. It's okay. You might not be right here next to me. But I can still sense them. I won't lose. Everyone is on my side. I'm not alone! And now the funky pop boss fight. of everybody who's supporting me. You'll never win against us, Hino Kagutsuchi! Silence, pest! I will not lose! I am stronger than anything! Crumbling corpse disintegrates before me. I can't take another step. All I can do is gaze up at Hino Kagatsuchi's body as it falls apart into the thin air before me. That was marvelous indeed. These events were truly an ordeal. The area had filled with silence once the battle ended, but a familiar voice ends it. I turn and see a young woman in a blue dress standing nearby. Elizabeth, what are you doing here? Though what you just defeated now was different in form, it appeared to be another embodiment of man's consciousness that wishes for death. And suffice to say, I had my own reason to witness its end. A reason? To abolish others also means to abolish oneself. That great power was also an embodiment of a distorted will, given birth by dissatisfaction. If left alone, it would eventually have become a great stagnation, leading to the destruction of the world. Even the world within people's hearts. The world within people's hearts? Um, you mean that place I met you the other time? Indeed. And if that were to happen, it would be a hindrance to my own wish as well. You have a wish. Elizabeth smiles and quietly closes her eyes. The expression is gentle, as if thinking of someone precious to her. I was told Elizabeth had gone on a journey in search of power. What she tells me is always fake. I don't understand everything, but she says she harbors a wish for someone else. What kind of person would she think of, a, think of a, as precious? Is she also searching for what she can do to help with that? <laughs> 
Is she also searching what she can do to help that person? Mm, that sentence confuses me. Seeing her soften expression makes me think back on my own wishes. Yes, only once this is all over. I should go see that girl. Maybe I'm out of my league here, but I hope your wish comes true soon. It honors me to hear those words. I wish to express my gratitude to you as well. Um, you mean thank me? Why? In this turbulence, you showed me an unknown miraculous power that cannot be attained alone. I firmly believe that that power will be a solid guide to the distant journey that I must take. And thus, I thank you from the depths of my heart. Elizabeth bows deeply to me. No. Oh, no. Oh, I really glad. didn't. This Wait. Place will disappear no, 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 no. Well, until we meet again someday, Labrys. I, I hit auto read and it, it just kind of went ahead of me. Anyways. Elizabeth thou bows deeply before me. No, I didn't do anything. I should be the one thinking her. Actually, there is something I'd like to ask you before I go, just in case. Shall I transport your friends to somewhere safe? That's right. This tower has already begun to crumble. My friends and I could never get out of this place before it becomes truly dangerous. I can really respond to Elizabeth as politely as possible. Th that would be wonderful. Please do. Very well. Then I shall... Hmm. Elizabeth, now that I think of it, where would a safe place be? Um, this place is gonna crumble soon, so anywhere else is fine. Could you hurry, please? Ah, oh, yes! That reminds me. There is one place where there would be no trouble if I were to send such a bizarre group of people there. I will now transport your companions. Well then. My vision grows hazy as she speaks. When I'll remember something. What about Shukun and Adachi san? If they're not transported too, they'll be killed when the tower collapses. Oh, hold on, Elizabeth! Oh god. Whether or not she understood my thoughts, Elizabeth smiles at me before everything is blanketed by a bright light. Okay. <laughs> wow. Interesting. Okay, I'm gonna do another battle and then we'll just go ahead and play out the events, the rest of the events of this and maybe that'll be the end of this, uh, this series. I don't even know what I'm going to play, to be honest. There's still Silent Hill, obviously. Which, uh... I figure I should, like, update you all. So basically, uh... I messed up pretty bad. I'm picking normal, because I suck at that game. Uh... And I've come to the realization that it would probably be better if I set it to easy. So, I'm gonna have to redo the entire game up to that point. If I do continue it, which, uh, I'll be honest in saying that I, I don't know. <laughs> the thought of having to redo it kind of sucks. But there could be a save somewhere that I could use. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out within time. If I do feel up to it. And what are you doing, huh? Are you scared or something? 
Never heard of the saying, fight fire with fire? It's a pretty cool end, I think. Player one is the winner. Get a bit better though. Now that I get a closer look, she's an ideal Japanese woman. That's something you don't see much anymore. Man, the girls in the country are something else. Welcome to the Velvet Room. The light fades and the scenery around me is completely different. This location is familiar. This is the TV world in the open space where everyone gathered. Huh? Is this inside the TV? Th that's right. Where's everyone else? Where's Shokun? I look over and see Shokun collapse on the ground a little further away. Oh, thank goodness. It was quite mean of Elizabeth. She only mentioned my companions. So I was worried about what would ha happen to Shokun. I see. Elizabeth said that she would transport my companions. That means she considers Shokun to be one of my companions as well. <clears throat> I don't see thought san anywhere, but this is Elizabeth we're talking about. I'm sure she transported him to someone, someplace too. Anyway, I worry about how Shokun isn't moving from the ground, and it quickly rushed to her side. Shokun! When I call him, he suddenly stands up, facing away from me. He looks around himself without a word, and looks down at the ground and quietly mumbles. Shut up, Scrap. Enough yapping. I, I couldn't help it. Not when I knew you were safe. Hey, did you kill that thing? Huh? Did you destroy Hinokagutsuchi? Oh, yeah. Can't you understand my words? Sorry. You're strong. Huh? God damn it, do I have to say everything to you twice, you piece of junk? Never mind, you stupid toaster. A toaster? Okay, okay, I'm gonna tell you why it's funny. Okay, so there's a meme in the Persona 3 com community that I guess is a toaster. <laughs> so it's really, I, I just think it's really funny. He's still yelling at me. But Shokun doesn't seem, does seem a little different from how he'd been before the fight. His voice and expressions, too. Maybe it's just my imagination. He doesn't seem like he's going to get violent, either. For now, that is. Shokun, where are you going? <sighs> it's none of your business. If you don't shut the hell up, I'm gonna cut you. But everyone's waiting for you. I'm sure Mitsuru-san and her people are, too. <gasps> shut the hell up. I'm not gonna start listening to what anyone wants now. 
Go back to where you belong. <laughs> I see. So you're that type. Uh, Shokun! Hey, Scrap. Shokun makes us it makes as if to leave this place when he stops to talk to me. Seems he's remembered something. I'm actually a little surprised that he's talking to me. Oh, yes Yes? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Seriously? Now you can't even speak properly. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it's too much. <laughs> That's really adorable, honestly. <laughs> I like that smile. I think it fits him well. You, you don't have to laugh that much. <sighs> oh, damn it. You really are broken, aren't you? I mean, I don't want to be that tight, but I ship it. Hey. Do you think even now he might be huh? never mind. See you later, robot. You'd better have your damn oil changed or something. Huh? Oh. Before he can think of something else to say, Shokun's already getting far away. What should I do? It's inside the TV world after all. But his posture is much more confident compared to when I first saw him. He has his own future waiting for him now. I'm sure he'll be mountains of... <laughs> there will be mountains of painful difficulties waiting. There's even a possibility that we might end up facing him again as an enemy. But even then, that's okay. Even though it was only for a short time, I sense a bond between myself and him. If I don't give up, if I keep wishing for his success, a day may come where we reach an understanding. But I don't get an oil change during a maintenance routine. <laughs> Suddenly, several shining figures appear in the room here in the TV world. When I light around the dims, I recognize familiar faces. My companions have finished fighting their own fierce battles gathered one here after another. What's going on? I thought the fog suddenly lifted, but, but where am I? Labrys, you're okay! Oh, I'm so relieved that I can't stand up. Labrys, son. Thank you. I believed in you. I knew that you could do it. I wish you could have seen us, Labichan. Shadow operative Junpei Yori totally nailed it. <laughs> Whoa! A soft yet stinky landing spot. Oh, oh my! This is inside the TV. Wow, we! Yukichan, Ken, Ken, Kurumaru's here too. Is everyone okay? Are we? This is the normal TV entrance. Oh, it would seem everything has been settled. Sister, I'm so glad you're okay. Still, I knew you would be able to overcome this. I'm going to have to try harder to keep up with you. You definitely showed us your resolve back there, Labrys. You did splendidly. We would have been in danger had you not been with us. <laughs> you haven't been with the Shadow Operatives for very long, but you've already become our ace in the hole. I'll continue counting on you, Labrys. Labrys, I sensed everything! It was really amazing! Labrys! I was so impressed that you beat such an immense enemy all by yourself! No, it was thanks to all of you. I only beat him down because you were with me. Thanks, guys. Another group of shining figures appears. This time it's Yukun's group appearing along with Fukasan. It seems they were fighting as shadows closing in on the tower when they too were suddenly enveloped by light and taken from this place. Now that was suspenseful. You did an amazing job. We're definitely throwing a celebration party. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. We have quite the group here together, after all. Labrys, thank you for all your hard work. Are you okay, Labrys? Are you hurt anywhere? I mean, you were really amazing! Thanks, Labrys. The town should return to normal now. It's 
It's all thanks to you. You could. Had I not come here, everyone in Enaba would have continued leading peaceful lives. Internally, I was afraid of learn to learn who truly thought of me. <laughs> what he truly thought of me. That's when King Kun told me that I should go and talk to him myself and find out how he feels. He was right. <laughs> Just seeing the kindness in his eyes right now makes me feel like there's no need to hear what he thinks about me in words. The relief of his painful battle coming to an end mixes with the joy of discovering how new, new entropy. <laughs> mixes with it discovering new entry friends. My happiness proves to be ca contagious, and before long, we're all un animatedly with one another. Hmm. Another t after some time, Mitsuru-san approaches me. Her expression seems rather meek, and then she speaks to me. She seems apologetic. Labrys, I'm sorry, but I need to hear your report. Where is Minazuki? Were you able to speak with him? Oh, yes, but only for a little while. But before you all came here, he... Oh. Huh? When I begin my report, Akiko-san nudges me on the shoulder with his elbow. Huh? As I stand in bewilderment, and Suisan clears the throat. Well, you know, Labrys, the Shadow Operatives are a formal organization. I am obligated to report about this case to the higher-ups. Right. That's why I was saying, before you all came here, Shokun- uh. Hey, Akiko-san nudges me on his shoulder even harder this time. Huh? What's going on? Did I say something weird? <sighs> You're even more naive than I am. You really are like a child when it comes to these things. There are just some things you don't want to be honest about at times like this. That's why you just gotta dodge the question and- uh, Ow! <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't start teaching Labras stuff like that. We don't want her becoming more like you. Oh, God. <laughs> wow. What was that for? You're scarier than the shadows. <clears throat> I didn't ask properly. Shadow Operative Labras, do you know where Minazuki went? Um, I'm sorry. I don't know where he went. Oh. Phew. Huh? The moment I answer them, they all sound relieved. For some reason, even Akiko-san and Mitsuru-san are smiling in a satisfied manner. Could it be they actually want me to say that I didn't know where he went? I see. Normally, we'd have to send someone to track him down. But if you don't know, then there's nothing to be done about it. Mm-hmm. No chases that can be followed. Mm-hmm. Precisely. Not as if they were trying to coerce her into saying that. Mm -mm. Not at all. I will report this case to our authorities, and the Shadow Operatives will take responsibility for it. All of us. Mitsuru-san! I get it now. If Shokun was the person behind such a serious case as this, you <laughs> were to be captured, he would have to deal with it severely. And even if Shokun were to beat Mitsuru-san and the others right now, he'd surely get angry like he was a moment ago. And there wouldn't be much of a conversation. But if we had Shadow Operatives pursue him ourselves, we'll have tons of opportunities to get Shokun to open up to us. Mitsuru-san, everyone, thank you. Hey, what are you guys doing? We're gonna leave you behind if you don't hurry up! The others who are a bit further away call out to us. It seems the time for us to part is drawing closer once again. But since we are connected by bonds, we'll be able to see each other anytime we want. We'll just be physically distant for a short while. Uh, are we really getting out from here? I'm feeling really anxious about this. Oh? Uh -huh? Are you scared, Junpei? That's pretty lame for a big boy like you. Don't mind me for going on ahead. Please excuse us. Everyone from Inaba jumps through the exit TV one after another, as if they were completely used to it. 
Mitsuru-san, I guess Hakiko-san, Fuka-san, who have also experienced this once, go as well. Alright, Koromaru, we should go too. <sighs> well, I guess I'd better go for it. Here goes! Come on, Toothpaste! Hurry up! Come on, get going! Hey, right already! This is my first time! Put me down! No! Eddie grabs Junpei's son and handles. Well, Bea handles him through the TV screen. Junpei san shout quickly across distance. Teddy then beckons me before pressing into the TV as well. I place my hand over the TV screen now. Empty plaza. Below this place is the school that I built. And that I have a place to belong. I doubt I'll ever come here again. Goodbye. Time I went back to the others. May 6, early morning. After leaving Juness, we heard that Kakuno-san had landed the helicopter in the schoolyard at Yasukami High, so we headed back to the school. It seems that after Kakuno-san risked her life to drop us off at Juness, she was forced to land near the outskirts of town. There, she studied the data from Shuji Akutsuki's files, and repaired the damaged helicopter, and took off again, and was even able to help the others. Talk about a tough person. This really means that we Persona users weren't the only ones fighting. The other reason why we returned to Yasukami High was because we needed to check on the crime scene as members of the Shadow Operatives. We go up to the rooftop and look down at the school, now that it has regained its original form. Ah, school. The memories places like this bring back. It's already been three years. <laughs> I know, right? Time goes by fast when you're living a fulfilling life. So you have a fulfilling life too, Junpei-san? Can you teach me how to play baseball? Oh, now you're talking. Our team trains really damn hard. I won't go easy on you, got it? That's what I was hoping for. I like sports, after all. By the way, Yukari, are you planning on going back looking like that? Uh, would everyone please stop talking about my clothes? I mean, you of all people shouldn't be talking, Akihiko-senpai. That costume's really cool, though. Wow, feather pink. I'm standing next to a real hero. There we go. Just be true to yourself, kid. Looking up to superheroes is what's truly childlike. Still, you're amazing, Yukari-san. You're actually wearing the costume and acting at the same time. Normally, even female ranger characters get played by male actors during the scenes while they're in their costumes. Huh? Is that for real? No, all those times I... Where did you hear that? Ken Kun's a big fan of those kinds of shows. But I guess he isn't all that childish anymore. I suppose it's because it's been three years. <laughs> it might be in poor taste to say this right after what happened here, but I'm still glad we were able to get together again like this. Yeah, like we were guided here by fate or something. The great hero Junpei and his pal saved the world again. Right. You probably wouldn't have even made it here if fate hadn't guided you. Seriously, the way he ended up here is just ridiculous. Maybe we were guided here by fate. We made some new friends too, after all. Everyone looks at me. I have so many people willing to call me a friend. It's a little embarrassing, but I can't help but smile. Most of all, I'm happy that I met my sister. I was able to meet you, son, and the others as well. Thank you, sister. Now, I'm thankful for everybody else. Without you, I'd have never woken up and stayed in that box forever. I'd just be a machine that hurts people. You all accepted me for who I am and gave me a place to belong. That's right. I have to repay everyone for all that they've done for me. To Mitsuru-san and her companions for giving me this place. To everyone who's made me realize that I'm never alone.
It's me. Milady, the preparations have been made. But are you sure about this? Yes, I'll be right there. Huh? Where are you going, Mitsuru-san? Hey! Mitsuru-senpai, don't tell me you're going back before us. Well, I'm sorry, but there are many things that need to be taken care of. I knew it! I'll have you know that we all put aside our jobs and other affairs to come here. You're gonna spend some time with us, like it or not. I do feel bad about causing you all trouble, but I guess, can't you persuade Yukari? No, I refuse that order. This is a situation with consequences that affect our team's morale. <laughs> I love this group so much. Give it up, Mitsuru. Don't worry about figuring everything out right now. I'll make sure things with those public safety jerks get settled. What? There's some guys hassling you. Let me come with you. I'll tell them everything about how Mitsuru-san did her best to help. Okay, so here's what you do. You go to them, and you look them dead in the face, and you say this. Suck my dick. And usually, you know, problem solved. Please, don't. Things will only get more complicated if you two get involved. But don't actually do that. It causes more problems than it fixes. Very well. I suppose I can forget about my duties for one day and enjoy some time off. That's what I'm talking about! <laughs> you look so happy, Yukari-chan. It's been a while since I've seen you smile so much. Huh? You think so? Do I really not smile normally? Well, you always seem so angry, Yukatan. That's because you're always making me angry! Hey, time out, Yukatan! You could really hurt me with that thing! A laugh that echoes from the rooftop, where the bright morning sunrise shouts down upon us. As the lively conversation continues, I quietly paste my hand on my chest. What's here right now connects me to that place. It connects me to everyone. May this warmth I feel spread to everyone else, and to him as well. And now time for the epilogue. Wait, it's only 89%? Alright, what's this about? Because there's 94% here. And then 89% here. Uh... We already completed everything, though. And what the heck? Okay, don't tell me that there's going to be more stuff after this. <laughs> Please. I want it to be over after this. I don't hate this game, but it drags on very long. A few days after the case ends, I was feeling kind of like an empty husk. I mean, it had been a while since I've been through anything like that. It wasn't just because it felt nostalgic, but, well, I remembered a lot of things. Like, how I don't understand a lot of stuff back then. Your pitching sucks! Stop throwing like that! My pitching doesn't suck, your catching sucks. Don't think you're all cool just because you got a good hit the other day. What did you say? As I'm watching the kids practice, not particularly paying much attention, just when I think things are getting peaceful, Bobble starts up. Well, it's Kochi's job to settle things like this. Hey, break it up! What's going on here? Stay out of this, Junpei! Coach Junpei, right? So, what's up? He blames me because he can't catch. It's because you've got no control. Everybody knows it. The other kids all start practicing and gather around the argument. These kids have way too much energy to get to fights frequently. So I need to meditate this conflict in a mature, dignified way in order to become a good example. Children pick up on that kind of stuff, you know? Hey, listen up. The most important thing in baseball is teamwork. No matter how good you might be alone, you'll never win a game by yourself. You can't play baseball if you're the only one on the field, right? Of course not. 
Right, well, that's just common sense. But if you keep putting the blame on other people, you're gonna end up all alone eventually. <sighs> Jesus Christ, I mean, I, I, true. But I, I don't know. I feel like saying that is a little harsh, especially to a kid. If you think the pitcher has no control, then you gotta try to work hard to catch anything, no matter what he throws your way. And if you think the catcher blows meaty chunks, try throwing balls that even the worst catcher can grab. Uh. If you both practice together like that, then everyone gets better and the entire team gets stronger. Isn't that right? Yeah, that was awesome. Go me. I wonder if these guys will ever look back on these days and think that they never understood that was... They never understood what was going on. I bet they will, just like me. I give them a good talking to, and since there was a great place to end for today, I call today's practice over. As everyone says goodbye and Dick goes their separate ways, one of the kids doesn't leave. Is that Gorb? He looks a lot more humble than usual. Noticing slight changes in your players is one of the things that can make you a great coach. Hey! Aren't you going home? Junpei, do you have a girlfriend? What? What's he asking me for all of a sudden? Sheesh, kids these days. Yeah, I didn't think so. Hey, what's with the attitude? That's really rude, you know. There's a girl I like, but she's gonna move away. I didn't know, and we got in a fight. Fight? I thought we'd make up like we always do. Even when we get in fights, things always go back to normal in a few days. But when I heard she was transferring to another school, I got worried about what would happen if I couldn't make up with her. <laughs> well, the answer here is obvious. You have to nut up and apologize to her. It doesn't matter if it's your fault or not. That'll fix everything. Mm. <clears throat> no. No, that's not true. <laughs> if you're apologizing to someone, and you have no reason to apologize, it can either just upset them or, I, I don't know, just make the situation worse. I don't see how it can make it better if you're not in the wrong. That's so lame. I can't do that. Lame, not lame. Is that your problem here? This isn't the time to care about looking cool. Not when it involves something you care about. If you and her end up going separate ways without telling her how you really feel, you're gonna regret it for a long, long time. But what if we get in another fight? Goro drops his eyes again. Well, that's this kid's bad habit. He acts all tough, but when things matter most, his timid side comes out. Aren't you the team's cleanup hitter? You have to strengthen your resolve. Guess I better do the coach thing and encourage him. But. The way Goro's hanging his head makes me a little uncomfortable deep down. Why? Because my own words are coming back to haunt me. Forgetting not telling someone your feelings before you have to part. Huh. Yeah. The grand slammed I whacked in my dream. And still feel it in my hands. I got up to the platform for the MVP interview. The time it ended before I could say it. This time, when I still have the answer to, I still haven't answered his question, it all peers into my face. Oh, well, I guess I need to strengthen my own resolve. I look at the empty outfield and picture myself in that dream. If you get a hit, you'll be a hero. Are you gonna try for a grand slam? The girl seems dazed for a second at my sudden enthusiasm. But his clouded face quickly breaks out into a bright smile. And he's his old self again. Grand slam. All right, I'll go do it. Girl's going for a grand slam with his girlfriend, huh? I don't know if I should call him an optimistic, or if he doesn't really know what he's talking about. But at least it looks like I've got through to him. In which case, I think it's time the ace slugger swings for the fences too. All right! After high-fiving Goro, I grab my stuff and run for the station. 
This time, I won't oversleep. Or, or do you? <laughs> the view of the pier matches an old memory of mine. The color of the sky, the ocean, the sound of the waves. This is the first time in years I've come back to this place. Whoa, this brings back memories. How long has it been since we were here? We were second years in high school, wasn't it? It would be three years ago. It was the summer of 2009. I just got whiplash. I'm sorry. I thought it was Lavras. Only three years, huh? It feels more like ten. But I guess it makes sense, right? Because they were all here at Yakushima, too. <laughs> A lot has happened since then. I see. Now that I think about it, you haven't returned to Yakushima since then either. We leave it. We leave the beach and follow a woodland path. The virgin forest is filled with lush greenery, and the air is cool and clean. We're headed to the remains of the ergonomic research lab. You want to go to Yakushima? Yes, if possible, that is. I don't believe there's anything left there aside from warehouses, though. Yes, I understand that. I guess I have no intention of preventing you from going there. But may I ask why? I have wanted to go back for a while now. That was when my sister's case began. So I thought that now would be a good opportunity. I wanted to see for myself what led to my birth. Hmm, I think it's a good idea. Yukari-san. Isn't it normal to want to know about things like that? We're talking about your roots here. I see. Actually, I was just thinking about taking a vacation too. That battle from the other day was a lot more grueling than I imagined it would be. As Ikari san says, it truly was a fierce battle. A fierce battle. Because I was severely damaged, my maintenance had to go on for a good deal longer than usual. And I spent a long time in repair bay. That's why when I'd been longing to feel the light of the sun. That's why I'd been longing, not when. I'm unsure if Yukari san knows that I feel this way. But she smiles. Hey, I guess, why don't we go together? And it'd be nice if we could stay at your summer house, like we went to before, Mitsuru Senpai. The Mitsuru san smiles knowingly. She readily agreed to our quest. The last time we lived together was back when we were roommates during our third year of high school. You're right. That brings back memories. I told you to stop being so overly polite because it made you stick out in class. And yet, you never did. After passing through the forest, we reach a desolate area with debris scattered about. This had been the outer wall that surrounded the research site. The entire thing has collapsed, and it's been overtaken by wild plant growth. So this is the place. I correlate what I see in the data about the site and confirm that it's the place where the combat testing ground had been. We pass through where the gates were and proceed further inside. We walk through the facility for a while. When an old white dog runs to us and barks. No. No, it can't be. Is it snowy? Oh my god. I feel as if the dog isn't barking to us to warn or fight us away. But it's more welcoming. Maybe even greeting us. A dog? Oh my god. I try to match the dog to the data I have regarding Yakushima. Cross-referencing appearance. Attempting to match vocal recordings. Snowy? Oh my god! Oh my god, it is! Huh? Do you know this dog? <laughs> no, not as such. I quickly find a recording of this dog. 
Oh god. I can't I can't help it. My my brain is just lacking. The accent kicked on as soon as Anyways, there's no doubt that this dog is Snowy, the same animal that my sister made friends with. He's still okay after all these years. He appears to be the dog my sister became attached to in the past. It seems he can tell that I'm like her. Huh? Snowy wags his tail and comes to happily nuzzle me. He appears to be welcoming, though. We'd never actually met before. I can't communicate clearly with him, the way I can with Koromaru-san. Still, his actions are easy enough to understand. I crouch down and gently pet him. It would appear that this place and what happened here are part of my own roots after all. What do you mean? In the past, I thought that my ability to communicate with animals was just something that I could do. It didn't seem like the people at the lab had deciphered dog language. And even then, I doubted that such an ability was necessary for a weapon. I had thought it mysterious that I was capable of doing so. But it seems that my sister can do the same thing. Huh. So are you saying that you inherited that function from Labyrinth? It's not really a function, per se. I stopped petting Snowy and stand up before taking a sweeping look around the area. Piles of debris, both large and small, are scattered about. The early summer sun shines down upon us. It's probably something that was slowly nurtured among the fifth generation units that were housed here. Behavioral traits, like having interest in things besides missions, get passed on. And then, interest in animals. And then, the ability to communicate. I see. After a long line of inherited system feedback, my sister gained that ability, and I, in turn, gained it from her. The reason I have a special rapport with dogs, out of all animals, is most likely because of that process. Wow, that's pretty deep. If it goes that far, then you're right. It's not just some function that you were intended to have. It's more like... a wish. Yes. I crouched down once more, and that snowy again. After that, I begin clearing the way, away the mossy rubble that's been left unattended for so long. Snowy happily runs around the area that has been cleared off, cleared of rubble. Still, for the ones before Labyrinth who had hearts or wishes, it might be a bit sad that this place is left like this. Just as Ikari says, the carelessly scattered rubble under this clear, beautiful sky only emphasizes the loneliness of this place. Snowy barks once and runs through the small hole in a passage blocked by debris, then barks again as if monitoring, motioning us to follow him. We see a shimmering yellow green light shining through the hole he had passed through. Huh? What's that? I move aside. Move debris to make a hole large enough for a person to pass through. What we find on the other side is... Oh. <gasps> wow, it's super pretty here. What is this place? Is it, there's a tall cylindrical structure that looks like a greenhouse reaching high above us. It seems that this area once indoors, but the ceiling have long since collapsed. The structure stands directly under the blue sky. The clear cylinder has literally acted as a greenhouse, allowing the area inside to glow with lush green grass, trees, and vibrant flowers. Even birds and butterflies flint in, about inside. The place is something like a paradise out of a children's book. But there's remains of an anti-shock chamber where Labrys and the other units of her modder had, model had undergone battle tests. There are many plants here that only grow far to the south of this latitude. 
This building's windows seem to have coincidentally formed a greenhouse. I take a closer look around and notice a large sword stuck in the ground in the center of the room. The unit that used this weapon is thought to have been destroyed, but the sword remains here unchanged. The number 024 is stamped into this. It may have belonged to a unit that fought here. No, 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 no. Stop, please. I can't. I, I can't. This is rough. Oh, I see. It's kind of hard to believe that this place was once such a nightmare. Once such a nightmare. As far back as my memories go. It's not wrong to say this place is just as Ikari-san describes it. And the way this room is now may be fitting tribute to my sisters who fell here with this very, very empty chamber. With this very chamber. The large blade here is more half covered with soft green moss, and small birds are using it as a perch. Hey, I guess. Let's ask Mitsuru Senpai to keep this place like it is. Yukari san. And why don't we bring everyone else here from time to time? Let's bring Labras next time, too. I nod. My power is your power. That's why I'll never forget you at all. As the last of the anti-shadow suppression weapons, I will fulfill my duty to protect my companions and my sister. Protect humanity and create a future with your memories within me. I'm glad I came here. I... Dude, I'm so tired. I'm, I'm so tired of crying. Why? I feel happiness in the depths of my heart and take a step forward. I raise my voice as loud as I can so it echoes throughout this entire chamber. Everyone, thank you. The chirping of birds and the sound of waves echo on forever. Oh, I'm, I'm, I, I need to take a second, you all. I'm sorry. A few days after the case was solved, I stand before Gravesight. The marker is still new and clean. We finally met. I'm sorry it took me so long to come. I I, I can't I can't guess any of these right ever. Some of my memories of those from another machine like me. Unit two four. <laughs> damn it! Damn it! Damn it! She and I were on the same production generation. Some of those memories of a girl. But Suzanne and her people aided me in finding that girl and finding out who she was. The first world in her records, after her name, deceased. But Suzanne was apologetic when she told me about this, but I wasn't surprised. The girl in my memory had been in the hospital room, that's why. In my heart, I was kind of expecting things to turn out this way. You know, there's a bunch of stuff I wanted to say. And I don't know where to start now, but thanks so much for giving me life. No words come back to me from the gravestone. I... I didn't make it in time. I have a younger sister, and I've got companions, and friends too. 
because you wished for it. I have a happy life now. But there's nothing I can do to repay you. Mommy, there's someone here. As I was standing still, a boy approaches me and looks up with curiosity. A woman, apparently his mother, follows him and bows to me. She's holding a bouquet of flowers. It seems his family has come to visit this girl's grave. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you, um, this girl's family? Oh no, it's just my boy has the same illness as the girl who's here. Oh, fuck no. <sighs> I look at the boy. Does He does seem thin. But otherwise doesn't appear to be in poor health. The girl here agreed to submit to a great many examinations when she was young. Because of that, the doctors learned a great deal about her disease. And it's thanks to her sacrifice that my little boy is still alive today. He can even go to school. She tells me more about her son. And then explains that they come the, to visit the girl's grave to thank her. After they leave the bouquet on the grave, the boy and his mother stand silently for a moment. When they leave, I'm alone in front of the grave once more. She dreamed of being useful to the world, and, the, and that wish came true. I knew she would have wanted to see the results of how she helped people. But in the end, she never could. And I've... I've found something I can do. Hey, can I call your mom? <laughs> On your dream, my mother, and protect the world with the light, where all the lives you were saved reside. Just as you wish for my happiness, I will wish for your happiness of all humans, and will do what I can to protect them. I'll do it to the very best of my ability, as a shadow operative. Yabakishi, this is a spectacular feat. We've never had a second year student receive the award for best paper at this school. <laughs> okay. Please, no more sad stuff. I can't take it. <laughs> um, thank you. I'd received an urgent summons from my lab at college and found my professor there. Openly praising me. You're already getting recruitment calls from labs and corporations, but I'd recommend that you devote yourself to studying abroad. Uh, abroad, you say? I just happen to be friends with a professor who's searching for an assistant. If you wish, I can write you a letter of recommendation at once. I hesitate a bit on how to respond to my professor's cheerful words. Ever since I entered the engineering department, things are becoming awkward with my parents. Though they still look pained with the subject of me not entering medical school comes up. Perhaps they'll be impressed with me if I tell them that I'm going to study abroad at a famous college overseas. But even if I were to leave Japan, if something were to happen to Mitsuru and the others, I'd show no hesitation in coming back there. Even if it wasn't for the case involving shadows, for example, if I was told they didn't have anyone they trust from Igas and Labras' maintenance, I'd still feel the same. I have no intention of actually joining the Shadow Operatives, but I want to help out as much as I can until the organization's foundation becomes more secure. I'm not afraid of moving away from them, but considering what Mitsuru-san is trying to accomplish, there are a lot of things that I can't help with until, with if I'm too far, and- How about it? Miss Yamagishi. I'm sorry, but I'll have to decline for now. If the time comes when I feel a need to study abroad, I'd like to ask for your assistance then. 
Yes, that's what I thought. <laughs> then I'll contact them at once and... Uh, wait, you declined? Oh no! Classes are about to start. Please excuse me. Thank you for telling me about this. Miss Yamagishi! Wait! Hey! That's one way to do it. I'm not staying here staying here because I'm needed. I'm staying because I choose to do so. And it's more important than taking a taking a course that someone else has prepared to prepared for me. I can study wherever I want, after all. I join the flow of students moving in the class to class and hurry my next to my next class. Oh my goodness, this video has been going on pretty long, huh? The early summer weather in Gekokan High School schoolyard is refreshing after school. We absorbed in chasing the ball like always. Not gonna happen. Okay, not high school. Ken's in middle school. One of the players I'm guarding against goes flying, and the game stops. Crap. Did I get it too low? A little too rough? I brush over and see how he's doing. Sorry, are you okay? <laughs> I'm fine. It wasn't a foul. That was a great tackle, Ken. You've been on fire lately. Luckily, he doesn't seem hurt. I relax, then grab his hand to pull him up with a smile. Well, we do have a match coming up soon. Isn't our opponent supposed to be a strong team? Yeah, you're right. All right, let's all put some more effort into this. Once more, keep our spirits up. Yeah! The sun has almost set, and it's about time to wrap up practice. I look around the school's grounds, and the other team is finishing up. I can tell by looking at some, someone standing in the corner of the schoolyard. Oh man, I didn't think she'd come here wearing that battle outfit of hers. I guess I should have given what more thought about where I suggested that we should meet up. I regret choosing this place a little, but you stand out anywhere, I guess. It can't be helped. I'm the only one who called Mitsuru's on here. This is the first time I've seen her in person since that case has ended. I'm well aware of how busy Mitsuru's on is. But I implored her to come here today. I'm starting to feel unusually nervous, but I make up my mind and take a few deep breaths before approaching her. Hey, who's that beautiful lady? Don't tell me she's Ken Kun's girlfriend. What? No way. I'm so shocked. Doesn't she seem a little serious, though? Mitsuru san, thank you for coming all this way when you're so busy. Don't worry about it. I am currently on a mission, though, so I don't have a lot of time. I would like to speak with you for longer someday. Oh, it's all right. This won't take long. I called you here so I could give you this today. This. I hand her a small silver badge. It's the official identification given to the members of the Shadow Operatives. When she sees it, Mr. Son briefly looks surprised. She looks from the badge to my face then swallows whatever she was about to say. I'd like you to take it back for now. I don't need it. I promise I'll come get it again one day. Very well. I will keep this for you. That's right. I don't need it right now. Miss Rusan accepts it without another word, but I bet she respects my decision. Miss Rusan's always thinking about us. I'm sure that my action speaks louder than anything I could have said to her. And she understands perfectly. This is how it should be. Thank you, Mr. Sun. Hey, Ken! Let's get going! A voice suddenly calls out for me in the school gate and breaks the silence between us. I look in that direction and see the rest of the soccer team who have finished changing and are waiting for it there for me. It should be obvious that I'm in the middle of a serious conversation here, but that doesn't stop them. Well, I guess it can't be helped if they might want me to hurry up. We just finished practice, and we're all hungry kids. It's only natural for us, their stomachs to be growling. I mean, mine is too. Okay, race it a wild duck! Last one there pays! Well, I have to 
go. I hope you stay well until I see you again, Mitsuru-san. In any case, since the burdens on my shoulders had been lifted, I quickly bowed to Mitsuru-san before rushing off with my teammates. We still have the after-practice wild dash to do. It's a famous tradition of the Gakukan Junior High School soccer team. Then again, we started this tradition on our own. We consider it one last part of the practice, so I can't allow myself to lose either. Huh, he laughed. But wow, don't you think Kenkun's changed a bit lately? Really? Like how? For real? He used to be all, I don't know, cold? But lately he's been in high spirits. It's like he learned how to be normal, right? You're right. He does seem to act more naturally than before. I like it. Three years ago, we forged a bond through our long and severe battles. The bond is still very important to me. But if I let myself get too caught up in that bond, I'll end up missing out on things in my own life. I think I was able to change because I realized that. Since that my bond with the others has remained unchanged, but more than that, I sense that I've grown in myself as well, even if only a little. What's best for me right now is to spend my days doing what I can without rushing through life. What happens to me now will surely affect my future. It's what I've come to realize. And acting that way will be... Oh, will be my way of fulfilling the duty that was left to me. <laughs> Kurumaru appears from the side of the street and magnificently runs past us. Kurumaru has been showing up like this from time to time and racing us to the burger place. I remember thinking about this during recent battles but even though Koromara is quite old, he sure doesn't seem that way. It is determined to not let us kids beat him either. Well, he's challenging me. I can't just let him win without a fight. I pick up the pace and chase after the white furry shape ahead of me. Target acquired. Commencing capture now. I guess. <laughs> I thought I was well concealed in the crown crowd in front of the station, but I guess comes charging towards me. The people around me draw back and people walking by stare dumbfounded. Not again. It's time for your English two class. I uh I'm gonna be absent today. Absence without Mitsuru-san's express permission will not be tolerated. Yeah, you should probably go. Oh, the class doesn't do roll call. If I pass the final exam, I'll get the credits I need. I've already mastered English anyway. I've heard that some college classes randomly take roll. One cannot discount the possibility. <laughs> With that, Professor? It'll never happen. You stand out. So your absence will immediately be apparent. How do I stand out? I'm not dressed for missions today. In any case, you must prioritize your studies. After the case had been closed, I went back to college, even though until recently, I had been taking time off to go on my training journey. Though Mitsuru hadn't had a hand in getting me back on my annoyingly. I mean, thankfully. I guess has taken it upon herself to manage my college credits, which has led to situations like this. The moment I go off her radar, she suddenly shows up out of nowhere and drags me back to class. My attendance, classwork, study groups, assignments, submissions, exams. She has total control of every move, and I don't even have time to train anymore. Stop being so persistent, I guess. I told you, I have plans today. You are the same as always, aren't you? You both stand out a lot. <laughs> Kurosawa-san. Kurosawa-san appears in the crowd with a, resi with a resigned expression. Yes, I was here to meet him today. He's currently a detective with the Metropolitan Police Department, and he is a trustly man, trustworthy man who is helping us in secret. Even now, 
He got into public safety department's moves before anyone else and was able to warn us. I wasn't told that you had class today. Should we postpone? Oh, no, it's all right. <laughs> Let go, I guess. I see. So your plan was to meet with Kurosawa-san? Yeah. I have something important I need to consult with him on. That actually seems to be the case for once. I don't have much time to spare either, so why don't you hand him over to me for today, I guess? If that is the case, then I understand. I will await your report later. I guess says so politely as she releases my arm and salutes Kurosawa-san. With that, she appears back in the, to the crowd. Disappears. I swear, she'd been a pest lately on purpose and enjoys seeing my reactions. <laughs> oh well, guess that means she's getting even more human-like. So, what did you want my help with? Well, this might be a bit late to ask, but I want to have enough power in the police to protect the others from the outside. So that's what this is about. Dealing with people from that side of the business is more trouble than fighting shadows sometimes, you know. Oh, I know. That's why I need power besides what I can do with my fists. Kurosawa-san smirks in response. I like the look on your face. That reminds me, you're old enough to drink now, aren't you? Well, yes. What's this? You don't like alcohol? No, alcohol and protein shakes go surprisingly well together. Akihiko? Buddy? Could you please not do that? And if you do, do it in moderation. I'm talking about both. Uh, drinking with you is going to be tiring for a different reason. Kurosawa-san looks amused for a moment and then turns and walks away. I follow him into the city. Mitsuru Senpai and I are walking through the city, which has suddenly become filled with summer fashions as long as holiday draws it. As the long holiday draws to a close. We've been through, we've been out together like this for a while, but when she wears clothes more appropriate for her age, Mitsuru Senpai looks even better than models. Heads turn to follow her wherever we go. Mitsuru Senpai doesn't even seem phased by this. So it's more likely that she doesn't have a clue she's standing out. It's a mystery to me how she doesn't notice that. The only thing that appears to bother her is now is how she's walking. I'm not comfortable in these clothes. Come on, you look good. And you know what they say when in Rome, do as the Romans do. I like that outfit. It's kind of like akin to her winter outfit in Persona 3. But like with more flair to it. But doesn't such a frilly skirt interfere with how you walk? Huh? Senpai, I know you wore a skirt as part of the Gekko Khan High uniform. A uniform is fine since it's like battle attire. Ah, uh, battle attire, huh? Hey, ladies, how's it going? Are the two of you looking for a good time? Why don't you join us and have some fun? Would you mind getting out of the way? I'm trying to enjoy my day off with my friend. <sighs> Again, I mean, yeah, she stands out, but how many times have we been hit on just today? Well, if not today, how about another time? Can I get your phone number? Maybe we could go out sometime. Oh. The man hitting on us touches my shoulder. This guy either has guts or he really doesn't, or he's really slow on the uptake. Either way, this isn't good at all. Mitsuru Senpai's arm flashes out like a snake and claps the man's wrist. Mitsuru Senpai, hold on! <laughs> Break it. I mean, what? I'd prefer it if you kept your hands off my friend. I also believe it to be in your best interests if you left at once. I'm okay. Jeez, you guys better get going. Oh, crap. 
Oh crap! We're sorry! The guys who have talked to us are so scared off by Mitsuru-san and they run for their lives. I'm happy that she protected me, but it's like she's seriously turning into an empress. She's the head of a special battle unit with the mission of exterminating shadows. I wonder if this environment is making things worse for her after all. I really need to help her have some time to enjoy herself. Senpai, let's go over there. I take Mitsuru-san's arm and charge into a shopping mall. I'm pretty sure that guys like that won't follow us all the way into the store. After checking out some clothes and other accessories like normal girls, in these busy holiday stores, we decide to take a break in the, at the cafe in, terrace. <sighs> that was fun. You're right. I relax and enjoy the fun we had and take another sip of my iced coffee. Mr. Senpai answered me absentmindedly, and her tea is left untouched. Senpai, you promised that you wouldn't think about the other day. Yukari. I know that it's impossible to keep it from getting to her. After all, the case this time was all because of the Kurija group's negative le legacy. Mr. Senpai had taken the role of the leader of the Kurija family to atone for her family's past, and yet. After being captured by the enemy, she couldn't take command of the situation. It may only be natural that, for, that she feels responsible for what happened. But even then, I can't be convinced that she needs to bear the weight all by herself. There are so many people here. And there she goes again. I came here today thinking about her, thinking about giving her a piece of my mind. She keeps taking responsibility for everything and worrying about things all on her own. Still, I can't bring myself to say anything about it when I see the look on her face. I thought that maybe confronting her emotionally like I had back then would lessen the distance between us, but that would just be repeating what I've done before. It'd have been sad to have resort to that again. I mean, we're best friends now, you know? As I try to figure out what to say next, all I hear is the bustle of the buzzy cafe. See? It's Feather Pink! Wow, you're right! It's Reiko Kuchakuin! Hey, Feather Pink! Where are Red and the others? Uh huh? Suddenly, a little boy points at me. Everyone turns at his, at his shout, and the children walking past me make a wild circle around us. N no! Uh, you're mistaken! You've got the wrong person! I hurriedly waved my hands and attempt to disperse the crowd. <sighs> Having a role that shows my face can really be inconvenient. You're quite popular, Yukari. How does it feel to be a hero? Huh? Uh, <laughs> well, I guess it's worth it since these kids are really into it. Death must not be needlessly feared, but it must not be needlessly desired as well. Face it and fight, Featherman. Or so the line goes. Senpai, why do you know that? That's the opening line of the intro to Featherman Victory. The catchphrase comes up in every episode of the show. I may be busy, but I still have time to watch a little television. What? But why would you watch Featherman of all things? Why wouldn't I? My best friend is one of the stars. Yo. That's <laughs> so cute. Uh, I had never seen such a program before. But it's true. I did sense something from it. I feel that you were trying to help people, especially children, teaching them to avoid bringing harm into their lives. That's... well, I guess that's how it is. The protagonists of hero shows don't punish evil. They protect those who are precious to them and give everyone the hope to live. I'm sure that those shows teach a lot of things to children, too. The same goes for Akihiko and Yamagishi, Aiga, Samara, and Iori as well. Every one of us is proceeding down their own path, in their own way. That's how I can concentrate on my own duties. The trust we've formed will not easily be swayed. Isn't that right? I can't help but sigh. I feel like I've been beaten instead. My best friend believes in me, and is watching over me. Well... I should do the same to her, even though I get the feeling that I sweet talked, that I got sweet talked somehow. Yukari, what's the matter? 
I guess I've been defeated today. Well, that's fine. Let's go to the next place. Next place? You want to continue shopping? Well, I don't have any idea when you'll be able to make time for me again, you know. What if I promise to contact you every once in a while? Would that do? It's a deal. But while we're here... <laughs> Exactly. I took a Mitsuru Senpai and we resume our shopping. I'm not sure why, but I feel as if whatever had been bothering me had disappeared. And is, is that the end? Oh my goodness. Okay, well I guess it makes sense because we didn't do Mitsuru yet. Even before we could complete the follow-up investigation of the case that Minazaki caused, I was summoned by public safety to the government office building. I would have liked to ignore this meeting, which is sure to be nothing more than an interrogation, but it's better that I, that I go than for them to get their hands on Labras and Minazaki. Also, I want to make sure that there's no trouble that comes to Yukari or Madison's daily lives. Though we recognize your achievement in recovering Labrys, wasn't it your own blunder that led to you, the leader of your organization, being captured? Okay, I shouldn't add the prefix of son because they're not... Anyways. There are also reports that you involved underage civilians in this matter as well. What do you think your organization is? If there were people there, then they must have acted on their own to protect their town and their companions. Also, with regard to the members of the auxiliary staff, the emergency suppression unit, they became concerned for me after my disappearance and came after me as individuals. That is all. It is absolutely unrelated to the shadow operatives. You're just playing semantics. Furthermore, when the second case occurred, the shadow operatives were forced to begin an investigation based on a lack of evidence. Since you were the ones who ordered the investigation, I believe you would know whether or not they were able to go on duty or not. <sighs> also, even though it may have been merely an intimidation tactic, I received a report that my people were fired upon during the incident. I laughed it off at the time since it's impossible that this organization could have been so stupid as to send my people into danger unprepared. You little... But as you pointed out, it was due to my own lack of preparedness that I was captured by the enemy. I will accept any kind of punishment for that. The report says that your capture was nothing but a ruse, though? Excuse me. What is it? We're in the middle of an inquiry here. I was ordered to bring these documents the moment they arrived. The man who enters the room hands a binder full of documents to the man interrogating me. While they're distracted for a moment, the newcomer glances at me. I feel as if I know the man from somewhere, but... What was that about? What is this? As you can see, it's the report from our undercover investigation of the Kirijo group. You fool! These are not the kinds of details we asked for! This deliberation is temporarily suspended. You will be notified of our further decisions at a later date. Their sudden sourness makes me think that this case is coming to an end. But to think someone would be able to turn into a turn in the report that would instantly suspend an investigation from the sticklers. It would seem that there are some people, even in public safety, who do not respect the higher ups. <laughs> also, that undercover investigation report must have been made by Shiragane. <laughs> it seems I'm in her debt. When I leave the conference, I see that the other shadow operatives have gathered. Mitsuru-san! What the... what are you all doing here? Uh, these guys insisted on at least trying to testify in person, since they failed you on the mission. I had no choice but to come too. Seeing that our friend, who had gone missing, was immediately summoned to the government office on her return, we were worried it was a conspiracy. Indeed, as your friends, it's only natural that we'd rush to your side, because we are your friends. <laughs> you all are so coy playing these semantics, but I'm a fan of it. I guess. Why are you speaking with such exaggeration? And why are you Kari and Igori even doing here? Yeah, we 
were all worried about you. After all, we're all your friends. The best of friends. Yep. Yes, siree. You realize I won't be able to stick up for you if they come down on you because of this. It'll be fine. Look, I'm in the middle of a shoot right now. I'm just out walking, Koromaru. I'm just going out for a run, you know? You're training, Junpei? You should have told me sooner. I'll come along. Oh, God. Uh, that's okay. I mean, can't you see what we're getting at here? Seriously, all of you? I can't help but laugh with amusement. Though this makes me happy as their friend. I have mixed feelings as the leader of the organization. The higher-ups that gave themselves away this time are the only the tip of the iceberg. There must be many people of the police and the politician realm who don't think well of the Grijo group. Those troublemakers will pounce immediately if we even have the slightest vulnerability unguarded. But even then, the Shadow Operatives will continue to protect and serve. We won't let anyone be forced to be alone. We can create a world where everyone will have the strength to deny their fate of destruction. Let's go. Yes! And we will continue moving forwards to the future for the sake of granting our wishes. The end. Oh my god. Oh, it's over. It's over. I hope. Please. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm gonna mute my mic while the credits roll. Give me a little break.
This show was brought to you by these sponsors. Well, that was certainly something. Okay, now is there anything else that's going to unlock? The true ending of episode Persona 4 is now available in story mode. A true ending? I'm gonna make this the last episode, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Even if episode uh, Persona 3 is a part of it too. It's gonna happen. Okay, I thought I was gonna end it, but we're not gonna do it. <laughs> we're gonna finish this. Oh? Impossible! What power is this? How can one human's power alone be enough to best me? Hino Kagutsuchi. That's what holds you back. The power I wield. The power we wield. It will never succumb to someone like you. Silence, pest. I will not lose. I am stronger than anything. You know, Kagetsuchi's giant arm swings up into the sky. This isn't good. If this place takes a direct hit from that enormous thing, never mind sweeping me off my feet. It could destroy the entire tower with all that quaking. Persona! Faster than I can call my persona, the other is Anagi flies towards Kagetsuchi from behind. Slashing at its giant arm and knocking it back. Adachi son? <sighs> what are you doing? I set everything up perfect for you, and you still didn't finish it off before I woke up. The way he scratches his head and rolls his eyes. Without a doubt, that's the Adachi son I know. Did he save me? Up until now, he's just dropped hints here and there, and never doing anything to help us out directly. Seeing me surprised at this small change. Noticeable only to those who know him, the Dachi son shows his brow. He's displeased in an ever so slightly embarrassed way. Hey, what are you spacing out for? I don't have time to waste either. So let's hurry up and put it into this. Right. I can feel it. The two Izanagis respond to each other and melt into one. I've never felt this fusion of conflicting powers before. They eventually coalesce into a sword, which launches itself into Hinokagatsuchi, enormous roaring form. Izanagi. Magatsu Izanagi. Okay, this is just the same as the ending so far, so... The giant sword formed with the torrent of power pierces Hinokagatsuchi and disperses its body into fragments. It's over, Hinokagatsuchi! Ah, I can do that too. The malice has been defeated, but your true battle begins here. After all that has happened, I'm eager to see what you will do. Forgive my insolence, but the fight about to transpire piques my interest. I wish to witness its outcome. <laughs> I don't want this. Show. Can we not?
Ah, uh, fuck. Well, we're in for time. The frenzy that was raging only a moment ago has unbelievably quieted down. There's only the cold and calm moonlight in the air. The red fog has disappeared somehow, and I feel like the time has stopped here. Where is he? I don't have to ask who he's talking about. It's easy enough to figure out. He's asking about Nazuki, the other himself within him. I don't know. He was trying to protect you from Kagutsuchi. I see. He's different. The madness and childish denial he'd shown up until now is all but gone. And now he's just standing there with an air of quiet, icy menace. It's like he knows everything that happened when he was Minazuki. When I woke up, I was in the hospital. I didn't know anyone there, or even how long I'd been out. Sho starts to talk. His clear voice is missing the intimidating quality it used to have. My care was paid up for basically forever. I had a pretty good idea where the money came from. Shuchi Kutsuki. Yeah. The same goddamn bastard who tampered with an orphan kid and threw him away like yesterday's garbage when I blacked out. <laughs> Shominazuki was one of the orphans collected by the Kurijo Ergonomics Research Laboratory as a test subject. Shuji Akutsuki, the man in charge of the research lab, implanted a mysterious artifact known as a plume of dusk into Sho's body. That lab was everything to me. I did everything I could when I was a kid. I was happy to see that rotten bastard smile. Sho. Eh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, all that was left for me when I woke up was a shit ton of money and a world I never knew. You get it, right? All I know is fighting. I don't have a damn clue how to live in this world. I think back to what Mitsuru-san had said. By the time Sho was old enough to think for himself, he had been taken into in by the research lab and placed in confinement, cut off from all contact with the outside world. The only other person Sho knew was Shuji Akutsuki, who was in charge of the research at the time. And when Sho lost consciousness, because of Akutsuki's experiments, he went he was sent to the hospital. I can only imagine how many how the world must have looked when he woke up all alone in that hospital bed. I left the hospital and went out into the world. Yeah, that's right. Into your Inaba. What? You were in Inaba? Yeah, and it sucked. It was so boring I thought I was gonna die. That's when the murder case broke on that foggy day. Don't tell me. That's right. I saw it all. I saw what you did, what you fought against, and how you solved the case. Good lord. Show's known about how us for far longer than what we knew about him. He's been observing us all this time. It was fun. It got my blood pumping. I got the scent of battle. And I thought you were just like me. Then right when that case was just about closed, that thing spoke to me. It asked if I wanted to destroy the world. You're talking about Kagetsuchi. Yeah. And Nazuki came up with the plan, and I went with it. And then, you know the rest. Just as I thought, Sho doesn't really want the world to be destroyed. What he really yearns for is a world he can live in. Sho, don't be afraid to bond with people. <laughs> You're like Labras. Someone who was made to fight, so that's all they know. But she's one of our good friends now. It's like when Yosuke, Chie, and my other friends accepted their shadows. It's an obstacle show must overcome as well. Still. <laughs> Still. The only way I can relate to you all is by fighting. <sighs> Alright then. Huh? If fighting is the only way you can form bonds, then I'll fight you till the cows come home. Just don't drag anyone else into it. Just like that, life returns into Sho's eyes. Along with it, the scar on his forehead and eyes have a pure bluish white, and I can sense 
the fire of life much stronger than before, surging through his entire body. Not only that, but something rises behind him. It's the persona that Minazaki was using. So, this is Sho's true power. Unbound strength. Oh well. Like this strategy was a failure. Can't go easy on him at this rate. Here goes. <laughs> okay, this is thematic. <laughs> Alright, let's have some fun. Well, I thought it was going to be fun. <laughs> it's over. Enough of this fuckness. Show me Nazuki. To think he'd take so quickly to the persona passed down from the self born of that plume of dusk. It's been a while since we've had a guest with that much power. <laughs> I presume Sho will be a rather dreadful underclassman for him. I truly look forward to what develops of this. Ah, so that red-haired young man has reached an epiphany. Yes. The many encounters he had here have brought about a change within him. He'll surely have many more experiences and battles on his journey from here on. As a new guest of the room. Elizabeth, will you not return to us? Theo was worried about you. I believe he had been to this place as well. Oh, did he? I hadn't noticed at all. Not even a raindrop's worth. Uh, is that so? Well then, it seems the time has come for me to take my leave. Please tell my incompetent brother this. My journey has just begun. And oh, he leaves. Elizabeth, I sense that you may become a guest of our room someday yourself. <laughs> okay, so it's then confirmed. <laughs> Show will be a character, <laughs> and so will Elizabeth at some point, or just like attendance in some manner. That was close. My blood ran cold many times during that battle. Wait, it did? Damn. I fought with all my might, without holding back at all. But Show was fi fast. <laughs> I asked. His slashes were sharp, and he fought like a veteran warrior who was going through intense training. How do you feel, Sho? <laughs> I lost. That's the brawn of a guy with bonds, huh? <laughs> uh, never mind. Even my jokes are lame right now. Come at me whenever you want, as often as you want. I'll always accept the challenge. Yes, this is the end. For Sho, this battle is only the beginning. The only way Sho could form a relationship with others was by hurting them. He started this mess because he wanted so badly to have those bonds that he couldn't contain. Couldn't attain. But, in every strike aimed at me during our fight, I think I sensed his wish for us to accept each other and to boost one another up. Which is how it should be. A connection with others can be a great strength, depending on how you face them. It helps us grow. Sho took hold of his first chance he had, through whatever means he knew, and offered it to me. I intended to accept his challenge with all my might. I wonder if that got through to him. So what are you gonna do now? I meant it when I said that the others would... Ah, that's enough. I'm tired of all your lecturing. 
I'll kill you for sure one day. You better be ready when I come for you. Sho makes a smirking vow, then disappears, lying far away from here. All I can do is smile at his rather smug attitude. On seeing Sho leave, Margaret approaches me. It seems it's over. And that was a wonderful battle. It even made my heart skip a beat. <laughs> I'll look forward to your rematch with him. I'd be fine if he didn't show up for a while. Is that so? This encounter between you two will one day give way to something irreplaceable. I don't know your desires, but that may be the nature of the power you hold. <laughs> Who knows? It's true that I haven't... I've made wonderful friends here in Inaba, and it's those friends who've allowed me to cover, overcome this... my trials so far. But that's not because I'm special or anything. I'm sure the same thing will happen to show from here on out, too. By the by, now that the red fog is gone, this place will disappear shortly. Shouldn't your friends evacuate more urgently? That's right. I completely forgot about that. This tower is only an illusion that came out of the red fog. So now that the fog is gone, this place will turn back to the regular old Yasugami High. Margaret, I have a favor to ask you. Oh? What is it? Could you please send all my friends here in the tower somewhere safe? Margaret falls silent, as if thinking for a moment, and then turns to smile towards me. Since you did entertain me somewhat, I suppose I should show my appreciation. Very well. I shall send you all to a safe place. Thank you. May we meet again in the Velvet Room. Hmm. <laughs> After those parting words, I'm enveloped in white light. As my vision begins to fade, I see an open space I was just in start... <laughs> just in start to peel away from the edges and crumple without a sound. What's this? Oh, it seems I was a moment too late. Aww. I think I missed an opportunity to see two tremendous powers clash. Oh, how I wish I could have witnessed it with my own eyes. <sighs> are you satisfied yet? S sister Why are you here? Is there some irregularity with my presence here? N no that wasn't what I meant. So, did you see Elizabeth? I, I wasn't out to find her. But rather, I was scouting the area in search of this cola you wished for. Uh. It, it's true. This is my proof. <laughs> I did not think that this cola would be hidden in such a sturdy metallic box. Disassembling the box took some time, but I did so without breaking anything. I also inserted all the 10,000 yen bills I had before reassembling it. To think that the people of this world go to such lengths simply just to buy cola. I still have much to learn. You busted open a fucking vending machine? I'm not gonna say anything. That sounds just like you. It doesn't matter. So, were you able to take a look about this world? Ah, of course, sister. The people I encountered here exhibited much stronger powers than usual by trusting in these bonds between each other. I gather that the reason they display such powers is because they have a wish they desire, along with the ones their bonds connect them to. I see. I'm surprised. You did rather well. Um, I think Elizabeth may have found such a wish as well. She has? What makes you say so? Perhaps it's only my imagination, but I sensed something while pursuing her. I thought Elizabeth might have found something she wants to do for someone besides herself. In other words, a wish of her own. Huh. Uh, sister? I see. Very well. So... What kind of bonds do you intend on exploring? Well, I believe we should first start by making a toast with this cola. I've heard that it is a sublime ritual performed by the people of this world to further strengthen their bonds. <laughs> I already worry about where you'll end up. Come now, Theo. Let's go back. P please wait for me, sister. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
That was pretty silly. Wait. Please don't tell me that this is, um... Uh, y you know. Please don't tell me this has credits, too. Please. I, I don't want more credits. I can't skip them. I'm just gonna be sitting here. All alone. Listening to the music. <laughs> May 6th. A sunny day in contrast to the gray skies of yesterday. Even though this is the last day of the Golden Week, the Juness food court seems pretty quiet. Normally, it would be even more crowded than usual. The reason it's pretty as empty is obvious at a glance. The people fled into the store like a recording tide. Receding tide. Not recording. After the bizarre crew who just shown up. This includes a man covered in by not much except a cape. A costume hero. A woman in thick fur despite the summer heat. And two robots. Well, it looks like the place is all ours. Is management gonna be okay with this? Uh, it's usually more crowded. My dad's gonna kill me if he finds out about this. Wait, is this my fault? Even Yosuke seems at his wit's end as he answers Junpei's son. Getting in his usual costume rather than normal clothes, thanks to the idiosyncrasies of the shadow operatives, he doesn't stand out much at all. After the night we solved that case, we decided to take this opportunity to throw a celebration party with everyone. I don't know the details of how it got started, but since Labrys wanted it to be someplace bustling, Yosuke took the bold step of deciding to hold it here. What I want to know is, how did it not occur to him that this, that this would happen? Uh, well then, it's a great day out and... That's so played out, Yosuke-senpai. Just hurry up and get things started. I'm starving. No, oh, I give up. You do it, partner. Me? In addition to our usual members, the Shadow Operatives joining in has made our group pretty big, and Yosuke gives up as everyone stares him amidst cat calls. Oh well. If someone falls, then another will follow them up. That's how our investigation team rolls, after all. Okay, here goes. One, two... Good job, everyone! The modest party kicks off with a toast. No one must have gotten much sleep last night. But they're all having fun chatting. Some are reuniting with friends they haven't seen in a while, and others are meeting new people for the first time. My, it's hot today! Yuka-chan, aren't you hot in that costume? You could unzip the suit just a little bit. Wow, hey! Don't touch that! Are you hot, Teddy? I'll open up your zipper for you. Here we go. Lavi <laughs> Chan, it doesn't open that way. No! Uh huh? It it came off. Ah! The pretty boy within can't come out now. <laughs> My first just locked him in. Actually, I I used to try this trick. Whenever, uh, like, little zipper handles would break, I would use a toothpick and just, like, kind of run it down, and it would go down the same way. Speaking of pretty boys, that definitely applies to Kenkun. He's got, like, this natural aura around him. I think you're right. He seems like someone you just can't resist looking after. Did someone say my name? Right. His skin is clearer than the average girl's, too. Huh? What? <sighs> You're after my position as pretty boy, aren't you, Ken Ken? I won't let you get away with this! Uh, I knew I should have bought a change of clothes. I'm sticking out like a sore thumb. May as well put on my mask, since that actually might help. Wait, huh? Where's my mask? <laughs> That looks perfect on you! 
Oh god. <laughs> Interesting. It really limits your field of vision. If I wear it during my training, it'll really help for low visibility situations. You fucking dork. <laughs> what kind of situations are those? People will call the police on you if you train in that. Whoa! It looks surprisingly good on you, Master. You look like a comic book hero. It seems they have a good master-disciple relationship going. Wow, you're an engineering student, Focusog? I'm hopeless at math, so I really admire girls who are strong in the sciences. It's nothing, really. You can be good at it, too, once you get the hang of it. Hey, what do engineering students do anyway? Do you know, Yukiko? Maybe they do experiments. You know, like adding secret ingredients to dishes. So that was an experiment. Well, what kind of guy do you go for, Mitsuru-san? Are you engaged or something? Me? I did have someone like that in the past. But all I can focus on right now are my missions. Whoa, you got guts taking a shot at Mitsuru-senpai and all this chaos, kid. She's a tough one, so be prepared. What? Iori? <laughs> You're so funny, Junpei-san. I think you might be one of the top two funniest people I know. <gasps> What's this? Is the lovely Rosette actually complimenting me? She's not complimenting you at all. So who's the other one? Why are you all looking at me for? Kind of rude, don't you think? Uh, hey, Yukiko-senpai. Can I pet him now, too? He says he wants to stay here a bit longer. Right, Gangaromaru? At least learn his actual name. Gangaromaru? I'm sorry, what? That's literally not even close. You understood that? That's why there are some cases where one can't help but to take drastic action. I see. Impressive, Naoto-san. You really live up to the Shirogane name. Well, it's a bit of a dirty tactic, but in certain pressing circumstances... Hmm. Impressive. Pressing? Naoto-san, was that a pun just now? It's well over the phoneme threshold. Huh? Of course not. It was just a coincidence. We've been fighting all throughout Golden Week. We're only now just getting a moment to catch our breath. The party goes on with the usual drift from topic to topic. I eventually notice that Labras has stepped away from everyone to stand alone in the corner of the food court. So I go talk to her. What's the matter, Labras? Oh, I was just looking out at the town. I didn't get a really good look at it the other day. So I want to take it in as much as I can now. Lapis gazes past the fence into the distance. The area around here is just an ordinary country town. It's hard to think that there's anything novel about it. But this is Lapis, who has been asleep for over 10 years. Everything she sees must be fresh and new to her. Uh, what do you see? <laughs> Lots of things. There's tons of people, everyone living their life to the fullest. Hey, Yukon. Thanks for everything. Labra suddenly bows formally to me. Did we do something? Is she just thanking us for helping her out? It was you who helped us out this time, Labras. We're even now. But Labra slowly shakes her head. I guess that wasn't what she meant. So... What then? I can't think of anything else she could be thinking us for. No, that's not what I meant. I slept for so long that everything's a first for me. Like having a celebration party with so many folks. Huh. Well, are you enjoying it? For sure. Everyone seems like they're having fun, so that makes me happy. And there's something I figured out, too. You guys and all them shadow operatives might not be together all the time. But that don't matter. Lapras and I look backward, back towards the group. There's no investigation team or shadow operatives anymore. Only a cheerful time shared between friends. The bonds we forged, forged won't disappear, no matter how far apart we may be. There's something I learned from Mitsuru-san and her people. They'll all want to be their separate ways. But they reunited here, even after quite some time. 
because of this case. I hope our investigation team will be like them from now on. I think we have it in us. What happened over the last day is our first step towards that goal. I agree, but doesn't the same go for us, since we got to meet during Golden Week? You're right. We promised to meet again, and though that was literally just the other day, here I am again. It was tough, but fun, too. That's why I want to thank you. I could say the same to you. A smile naturally forms on both of our faces. After Lapras has a good laugh, she looks straight at me. I'm sure Shokun will be okay. Hmm? He might have lived all alone, without anyone to talk to, but we are there for him now. Yeah, Sho's journey is just getting started. We can change as much as we want by learning from other people. You got that right! Lapras mumbles to herself and looks into the distance once again. Her expression is bright. It's like she really is human. And I have no doubt that Sho can make just as dramatic a transformation. I'm gonna do my best too. It's truly a wonderful day out. The sun's risen high up into the sky, casting strong shadows on the rooftop. The clear blue skies of Inaba look as though they're blessing our futures. The end. For the third time. Please no credits, please no credits, please no credits. Now, damn it! <laughs> it's it's just gonna be the same stuff, please. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna mute my mic again. Okay, so I was gonna like take a drink of my tea, or not drink, but I was gonna take out the tea bag because I thought that I drank all of my tea. And I stuck my hands in my tea. It was very cold. That is all. Oh my god, that's strong. Ugh. Yeesh. That's been steeping for over two hours now. Mm hmm. No wonder. Oh, it's like drinking concentrated plant water. Ugh. So what I thought about doing is, um, before I end this, if there isn't anything for the Persona 3 side that is immediately correlated to, um, another credit scene, 
then we uh, will probably just look through the gallery a bit and then in the video here uh, considering that this is going to be the end of the series and I'm probably not going to play any more Persona after this other than my unlisted series that I'm doing for Persona 5 Royals uh, modded thing which to those of you that want to see any of that um, if you join the discord I post it there uh, they're all unlisted videos because I don't want to really like put out <laughs> something like that when if there's already like a playlist there um, but this is gonna be a while from now too I do want to do like a another playthrough on Persona 5 Royal because the entire playthrough I mean the entire thing was just overlapping audio and I wasn't a fan of that so I, I don't know I just like having things that don't look and sound like trash and I guess you know at this the time it was viewable was but following sponsors I don't know it's just not something I'm very proud of is all anyways let's see what we got Is that all? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. 99% though. Well, now I'm curious, right? Because why is it showing? No. Wait, to be continued with Teddy's. I didn't do his, I didn't finish his. Because, oh yeah, sorry, because because I did the live stream with Maya. Um, you know how I said that this was going to be the last one? Maybe down the line I'll do the rest of these, of the Labras arc. But who knows? <laughs> I don't know. I'll try to figure out what to do next for uh, videos and such. I'm sure I'll find something. But, yeah. We haven't unlocked all of the illustrations, obviously. But, it's quite a lot here. Oh yeah, if you all couldn't tell already, anything having to do with Lapras' story is like an instant cry. <laughs> For some reason, that stuff just gets me really hard. Or gets me, period. Okay, I'm not finishing that. Anyways. Um, yeah. <laughs> so... I guess with that weird thing out of the way, uh, I hope that you all enjoyed this video, or this series for that matter, and as always, until next time everyone, goodbye for now. Boop.